Welcome to today's presentation. Today we're going to cover part three of the cable series, cable thermal analysis. And the agenda for today will be as follows. We're gonna go over cable ampacity overview. This is essentially the fundamentals of, of uh, cable ampacity. And um, then we're gonna go over the various cable standards. This is essentially going to be a brief overview uh, slash review of the previous uh, cable uh, standards covered. And then we're gonna uh, cover more in detail the thermal analysis hand calculations. And also we will jump into the software and we were gonna perform a sizing example, a thermal analysis using the ETAP software. So as just a, a brief reminder to uh, everyone, the ETAP cable systems uh, comprises of three main um, uh, study types. So have the thermal analysis, which is what we're gonna cover today. And that essentially allows you to perform underground raceway systems in both the direct buried or in raceways, um, and as well as the uh, temperature um, calculation, the steady state temperature, and opacity for better doing cable sizing using uh, uh, the near McGrath method or the IEC um, thermal analysis method. And then over on the right hand side, we also have um, a mechanical analysis module, which is the ETAP cable pooling module. It provides the sidewall pressure as well as tension calculations. And then finally, what a lot of us uh, use ETAP software for on a daily basis would be, for example, your network analysis. So figuring out what the voltage drop is through a cable, um, the short circuit, uh, uh, motor starting, as well as harmonic. So uh, that would all of those studies um, would fall under the, the network analysis. So now that we got uh, some of the introduction items um, uh, uh, during that slide, I'd like to cover the fundamentals, so essentially what cable ampacity uh, is, because the, for the rest of the presentation we will, uh, you know, we will need a, um, a clear definition of what this is. So essentially it is the maximum amount of electricity current a conductor can carry before sustaining immediate or progressive uh, breakdown, right, due to the exceeding um, r uh, of its temperature rating. So we all know that whenever you uh, order or purchase uh, a cable, uh, there's going to be a, uh, a TC rating or a maximum uh, um, uh, allowed rating uh, on how much current that cable can actually carry. So we're going to go over some sample data sheets later on during the presentation uh, so we can get an idea and you know where where that information is. Uh, also, uh, an, another way for for this would is going to be current carrying capacity, and or CCC, and this is typically this is how it's known in IEC world. So anywhere uh, where it, you know we have 50 hertz, and th that's uh, capacity cable capacity is usually commonly used. Uh, heat is generated when current is carried by a conductor. Um, since it must pass through an electrical resistance, which is the, in this case the copper. So as you could see, I have the equation for, for power, watts equal I square R. So that is essentially what our, our cable is, uh, is doing when you have current going through it. Now for, for cable ampacity, it's very important to also consider thermal limits. And when I mean thermal limits, it could be any of the following. So I have a picture of, of a, um, the, how a cable is constructed from the outside PV uh, uh, you know, sheath all the way to the conductor, the insulation, the inner sheath, the armor. All of these are thermal limits. Um, so uh, thermal limits is anything that is uh, from the cable construction. You also have thermal limits from installation types, right? How many other conductors are running next to you know, a particular cable that you're trying to size. Also, a uh, thermal limit is going to be the ambient temperature, or TA, as, as we're going to go over um, more of this in detail. Group effects, how many conductors per um, conduit. Uh, other thermal sources, so if you have, for example, a, a steam pipe going through a, uh, an underground raceway system, this needs to be considered as well. And also, uh, another thermal limit that not, you know, a lot of times we don't consider is also harmonics. 
right? So if you have lots of variable speed drives or any uh, inverters uh, for you know uh, renewable installations, all of that typically will add harmonics, and those those are um, it's, it's something to consider. So as a, a quick review, uh, we've 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 kind of gone over the the first two items on how to determine cable opacity on the methods on previous presentations. The first one is the manufacturer's based opacity using corrector correction factors. This is typically the IEEE 399 um, or the Brown Book, as a lot of us uh, still call it. And also uh, number two is the opacity tables using standard rating factors. So this is commonly what the tables or the details on the NEC um, are provided to us. And the third item uh, that we're going to cover is the, um, the, the thermal analysis method. So we're going to cover the near McGrath method as well as the IEC 6287. So this is going to be, this third item is where we're going to focus for this uh, part three of this presentation or uh, for, for cables part three. Okay, so uh, again, we've we had a chance to go over some of these installations. These are the... Um, <coughs> we have on the right hand side the uh the some standards that are used around the world uh you have the i three ninety nine brown book which covers direct buried as well as duck banks then you have the i c e a p fifty four 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 zero which is commonly used on above ground cable trace then you have the national electric code or the n e c which provides us with installation tables for above ground trays, above ground conduits, airdrop. And then for our IEC users, we have the British standard, which is the BS uh, 7671. And we also have the international standard, which is IEC 6364. So the question a lot of, we get a lot of questions um, from engineers on which underground method is the best one to, to use. Should we be looking at the uh, NEC or IEC table lookup, or should we be using the thermal analysis? In this case, we would be, for example, the, uh, the near McGrath or the IEC uh, thermal analysis method. So um, that's a very good question. Uh, for underground electrical duct bank installations, uh, the NEC says utilize configurations identified in NEC section 310-15. However, uh, we are going to see some limitations on, on some of the um, provided tables on both a NEC and IEC standards. So for, this for distinctive or all other duct banks configurations that are not uh, specified in NEC or IEC uh, detail tables, we are to utilize the near McGrath method or the IEC method. As a as a brief example of the comparison between near McGrath method, um, the IEEE 399 method, and the IEC 6364, uh, we have a two by three underground duct bank, and we have ampacity calculations comparison. So we have for this particular two by three duct bank, we have a maximum uh, or TC temperature of 90 degrees Celsius and we have an ambient temperature of 35 degrees Celsius as, sh as shown here on the table and then we have the three methods and as you could see the most conservative uh, ampacity is provided to us by IEC 60364 um, and that is 90, 90 amps. Uh, IEEE 399, if we were to go by that particular lookup table method or derating, um, derating method, we would be at 104 amps. But if we're using the near McGrath method, we can actually calculate the opacity to be 110 amps. Now, uh, this is using a uh, the thermal soil resistivity or rho of 110. I'm looking at the 110 column. But even if we look at the next column, the soil thermal resistivity row of 90, our near McGrath or our thermal analysis method provides us a higher opacity. 
Um, uh, some of you may say this is not the most conservative approach because that ampacity value is actually higher, but it is a more closer to reality method, in fact. So uh, as you could see, you could safely get more performance out of your cables uh, whenever using the thermal analysis method, whether it's the near McGrath or the IEC uh, method. Okay, so uh, this also g leads us to the to the the conclusion that the uh, both the IEC as well as the NEC uh, tables installation tables provide us with some kind of um, a safety margin. Okay. So that's important to remember. There is always, we, those tables always provide us a, 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 a safety margin, which is a good thing. Okay, so let's talk about some of the NEC installation table limitations. And this is important because whenever we fall outside of these table limitations, we essentially need to perform a thermal analysis um, anal um, uh, calculation. So uh, for the table limitations, there's no provision for derating effects of multiple duct banks and or direct buried cables in close proximity. So that's one of the limitations. Also, fixed variables such as depth, width, height, um, quantity, and spacing of cables. So details uh, one through three d deal with duct banks and details four through eight are direct buried. Um, but whenever you, whenever you have different depth, width, height, as what's specified on the table, you have to use a, 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 a thermal analysis calculation. Uh, tables are built around 30 and 40 degrees Celsius temp uh, ambient temperature, 100% uh, load factor, and also a thermal resistivity of 90. So this is your uh, soil thermal resistivity or row value. So if, you're, if your backfill or your soil has a, a different thermal resistivity, or if your ambient temperature is other than 30 or 40 degrees Celsius, you're going to have to use, or it's, it's safer to use a, uh, a thermal analysis. Also, the cables must be identical and have the same current. So if you have a mix and match of different cable sizes going through the, the conduits, it, this method is probably not going to be very accurate. And also the cable rated temperature of 60, 75, and, and 90 with an ambient or a TA of, thir of 30. So whenever you're your uh, rated temperature falls outside of these numbers, right? It falls outside the table limitations. So these are these are just kind of some of the limitations to keep in mind. W let's now talk a little bit more uh, regarding the underground raceway, raceway thermal analysis and what it is. So I have just here a brief picture of a three by two. So typically we'll go row ro uh, rows by column. <coughs> so in any given installation you may actually have different configurations uh, uh, for underground, either in direct buried or, or raceways, as you could see from, from this picture. So it's important to take into account um, the different cross sections to, to arrive to the most conservative uh, calculation for when you're doing sizing. Okay, so let's talk about heat source for conductors in underground ducts. So as you could see here, I have taken a, a picture um, from the uh, from the standard, uh, providing essentially a cross section view of a three by three uh, raceway. And then you have your you have three conductors per conduit, three electrical conductors per per conduit, and you could see the arrows are essentially the the uh, the heat dissipation. So for conductors in underground ducts, there are several heat sources as illustrated in this exhibit. This is was taken from NEC uh, exhibit 310.10. So you have conductor losses, you have skin effect heating, you have heating from uh, other conductors, mutual heating from other conductors in the duct, and mutual heating from other ducts in the vicinity. So if you have you know, several ducts side by side. By side. Some of the thermal barriers, this is, is, as, uh, is as in essence resistance to heat dissipation in underground installations are conductor insulation, airspace, uh, the earth backfill, and the duct wall, as you could see again from, from, from this picture here. So essentially heat is generated by various types of losses, 
in this case the current going through the, the, the copper cable. It is uh, conducted through the different thermal barriers of resistance as we already mentioned. So it has to, the heat has to radiate uh, from the conductor out towards the conductor insulation, towards the other conductors in the duct, uh, towards the duct wall, and then into the air in duct and, and you know, finally dissipate out that way. So to perform this kind of thermal calculations, we have to get familiar with the heat flow model. So cable thermal analysis can be modeled as an electric, uh, basically an electrical circuit. Heat flow is represented as current and heat thermal barrier shown as resistance, as, as you could see from, from these pictures. Source of heat is generated by current passing through the, 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 the conductor, as you could see over on the left-hand side of this, of this picture. And then the, the heat arrow uh, dissipating. So the heat transfer, the heat transfer, if you remember from the, from the previous, uh, from the heat model here, is uh, it's your difference between TC and TA, right? TC being your maximum permissible conductor temperature and TA being your ambient temperature. That's, your, that's the heat transfer. So the heat transfer or the rate of heat transfer is directly dependent on the difference in temperature between the conductor, TC, and the ambient temperature, TA. So here's a, a, a brief representation of, of, of that formula. So it's, it's uh, I square R times the, the, the soil thermal resistivity or rho, okay? And then if we're solving for uh, current or I, then we have the, we, we isolate or rearrange the terms um, as a function of I, then you could see, you could see here the, um, the formula for that. So this is uh, in essence, just a, a very basic representation of how we uh, ha uh, are able to handle heat transfer for hand calculations. Okay, so let's talk about maximum operating temperature. This is the TC value that we saw on these previous slides right here. So TC, right, would be the um, maximum permissible conductor temperature. So this TC is essentially the rating that you see for uh, as the maximum operating temperature. So uh, depending on the insulation material of your uh, conductor, of your cable, you're going to have a, a different maximum operating temperature. So for example, you have PVC type A as the insulation for a cable, th and the maximum operating temperature for that would be 75 degrees Celsius, all the way down to, if you look at an EPR medium voltage cable, EPR uh, medium voltage 105, the maximum operating temperature for that would be 105 degrees Celsius. So the insulation material has a has a um, has a direct impact on the maximum uh, temperature. So here we have a, uh, a EPR MV105 uh, power cable. Uh, this is essentially just a typical data sheet uh, that you would see for like a 535 uh, for a 35 kV uh, cable. It it uh, it provides you with the maximum uh, or TC maximum temperature. It, it this type of data sheet also typically will provide you with a um, at opacity, but that opacity, right? It typically it, it's under very confined restrictions. Typically, like a two by two installation underground. It doesn't take into account um, many factors. So now. If we wanted to do or generalize the heat flow model that we started, you know, talking about uh, earlier, you remember from the heat source in the underground uh, underground cable system to ambient temperature through a series of thermal resistances. So uh, you have all the way. So the heat flows from, in this case, as you could see, the heat flow arrow. It flows from the right from the conductor temperature, it has to go through conductor insulation, it has to go through the filler, uh, the tape, uh, the um, airspace in the cable, the cable overall jacket, um, the airspace in the conduit, the non-metallic jacket or, or, or conduit, uh, in this case like either like, like if you have PVC um, uh, conduit, into the, the earth and finally into the ambient temperature. Uh, so all of these need to be, all of these um, barriers need to be taken into account when doing thermal the thermal analysis. So 
um, for that, the, N the, the NEC as well as the IEC standard tells us to use a thermal um, calculation such as the near McGrath method or the IEC um, standard. And as you could see here, he, um, there is here's the near McGrath equation provided to us in um, Article 310.15. The NEC doesn't really provide us with any any guidance on how to use this, but they do provide the following. So the near McGrath or the NEC disclaimer that it that that, that they provide is. Um, intent of NEC is not to provide instructions on the use of the near McGrath method of calculations, but to identify the many factors affecting the calculations. Because of the many variables and the complexities of the many formulas involved, the code requirements, the calculations to be made under engineering supervision. And that's taken straight from Article 310.15. And they don't really provide uh, you with a copy of the actual near McGrath uh, paper, paper, which is the picture that you see over on the right hand side. They do provide you with a generalized uh, equation as, as we saw here, but if you wanted to do a hand calculation, so for example if you wanted to calculate the ampacity of a, con a three conductor concentric um, XHHW insulated copper cable enclosed in a one inch steel conduit with an ambient temperature of 40, 40 degrees Celsius, you would ha essentially have to consider um, many many different um, uh, constants. So, for example, you would have to refer to the near McGrath uh, paper for for several um, constants, from the insulation thickness to several tables provided on the paper. It's a very time-consuming and very labor-intensive process. So, typically, what a lot of the uh, engineers will do is perform these type of calculations using a software graphical um, tool like ETAP. So what I'd like to do is I want to quickly go over uh, features and capabilities now that we've, we've gotten a little bit of background on um, what thermal analysis is and so we could see uh, how a, an example of a, uh, an NEC installation is done. We're going to go over some of the features and capabilities of the software. So we're going to go over the, the graphical results. We're going to go over uh, how to create a duct bank in the, in the software using a rule-based wizard. So we don't have to worry too much about spacing. Uh, we're going to take just the, the standard spacing values from NEC. We're already built into the rule book. We're going to run a steady state temperature calculation. We're going to run an opacity optimization. Uh, essentially a uh, uniform opacity. Then we're going to go over uh, on doing automatic cable sizing, so taking the calculated opacity and doing a cable sizing. And also we're going to go over transient temperature. So this is a, uh, a uh, as a function uh, of time. So this is very useful for some of the distribution planning users uh, where they may see various loads on their conductors throughout the day. So like peaks in the morning and in the afternoon. So let's let's uh, open the the program and uh, proceed with this exercise. This is the exercise that we're gonna that we're gonna uh, start with. So this is an example from NEC. This is detail number two. So essentially, it's a two by two uh, exercise, and we're gonna go over on how to enter all of the the different dimensions. So you have spacing between conduits. You also have dimensions for the raceway. You also have the depth. And you also have the thermal soil resistivity, as well as the cable characteristics and the conduit characteristics, which is the PVC conduit size 4. So we're going to go over how to use the wizard to enter this information quickly. OK, so we now have ETAP open here. What we're essentially going to do is uh, create the cross-section and then figure out what the steady state temperature is. We want to know if we are within the maximum allowed limit of um, 90, de 90 degrees Celsius. All right, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, create a new presentation in uh, Underground Raceway Systems. It is on the left-hand side toolbar. It is the icon that appears to be like the cross-section of a 2x2 two two raceway. We're going to call this uh, UGS 2x2. Uh, UGS stands for Underground Raceway Systems 2x2. 
but the name is um, subjective. It could be anything. Um, okay, so we have the the soil. So essentially, we're looking at just underground soil here. And over on the right hand side, you notice on the top right you have the new raceway. This is essentially the wizard that was going to allow us to uh, do a uniform or non-uniform uh, raceway. You can also create a new direct buried. Um, the for direct buried, um, uh, you use you would just use locations. Um, a location instead of the conduit. The only difference is the location is like a placeholder. Um, uh, the uh, conduit is actually like a PVC or a, uh, a steel uh, conduit. Um, and then you can either uh, place existing cables or new cables. Uh, existing cables, obviously, if you have an existing single line diagram. So let's begin with the uh, creating a race raceway. This is a two by two, so two rows, two columns, as per the exa um, example. The um, the size um, of the conduit is a PVC 40, uh, size number 4. So you have the uh, overall diameter, you have the thickness. Um, that cannot be changed, it's automatically selected. And then you have your conduit spacing, horizontal and vertical. So the, the center to center spacing between the conduits is as per NEC standard 7.5 inches, which is uh, pre-filled out for us. And then the distance to reference location. So you have horizontal and vertical because this conduit or this raceway is uh, has a depth of 30 inches. We need to uh, specify a vertical depth uh, of 30 inches. The horizontal will not make any difference at this point because it, it uh, would only come into place whenever we have other heat sources or other raceways uh, either to the left or to the right. But uh, vertical is essentially is your, your, your depth. And then the raceway dimension, this is the outside raceway dimensions. It is um, 19 by 19. So the height and the width, 19 by 19. Raceway borders are automatically <coughs> calculated for us. And you notice that there is a, a small preview of what the raceway is going to look like. Before I click OK, I'd like to show you that there is also a non-uniform um, raceway. So for those of you who may have a raceway with different uh, conduit sizes or if you're doing at a circuit level with lots of uh, detail and, and different cable um, or raceway sizes, then you have a circuit level. So uh, perhaps the most common one you're going to be using is going to be the uniform. So I click OK and here is now a, a preview of my 2x2 raceway as you can see, it is there's a 30. This is in inches, 30 inches in depth. Um, again, the 10 inches left or right has no impact right now because no, we don't have any other uh, elements. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to start by defining the 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 the, um, the 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 soil. So double click on the soil. Um, right now we're going to leave it as uh, clay dry uh, with a thermal soil resistivity of uh, 90. The ambient temperature is going to be 20. <coughs> uh, and then we're going to have a warning at 88 and the alarm at 90. <coughs> the alarm is essentially the, the TC, the maximum operating condition. So if our conductor was to surpass that or even get close to it at 88 degrees Celsius, when we run the steady state temperature calculations, it'll alert us. Now going into the, the backfill, uh, we're going to have the backfill is provided to us at 60 right and uh, the conduit I'm going to double click now on the conduit and we need to have the conduit uh, type PVC 40 size 4 just like that okay and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in a cable and place it right here uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna let's just say a length of a hundred feet and then open the library uh, the frequency is 60 Hertz, so I'm going to uncheck 50. The material is copper, so I'm going to uncheck aluminum. The voltage is 1 kV, so uncheck everything else. The insulation for this one is rubber, so I'm going to predictive search and just type in R U. There it is, rubber, rubber 2 is what we have. And then the source or the standard of the manufacturer is NEC. So I'm going to just type in again NEC. There it is. Click OK. Hmm. 
here we go okay and because the installation is uh, on a PVC 40 that's the the conduit I'm gonna select non-magnetic the size given to us is 350 feet or uh, three 300 the, the size given to us is 350 and as you could see for the uh, um, uh, underground and above ground opacities uh, TA uh, in TC is provided to us uh, all over on the left hand side the the maximum uh, allowed is uh, uh, temperature is 90 degrees Celsius okay now that this is uh, uh, set up for us uh, the example also provides us or gives us indications on the the loading so the loading is 284 284.5 amps um, equally distributed in all three phases mm -hmm. and also we have we have the ability in ETAP to bring each phase individually or uh, place each one of the phases into um, its own conduit. You could you could um, uh, the user is f uh, I'm just showing this to show the user that um, the the software is highly flexible on where you place each face. Okay, so I'm gonna now uh, head over from the edit mode, which is the pencil, to the underground raceway sims study case, and I'm going to click where it says a steady state so it's over on the uh, top right and I'm going to call this a steady state uh, te uh, temperature that's the name of the report and it's uh, we could see here that ETAP is providing uh, the results right on the cross-section essentially the loading in amps so that is the the value that you see on top 284.5 amps this is the, the loading on the cable. And then below is the temperature in degrees Celsius, uh, 42.6 degrees Celsius. So as you could see, there is no alert at this at this point. Um, so we don't see any um, we don't see any any color changes. However, that being said, if we were to change this uh, this loading in uh, on the cable from 284 so let me just double click on the cable so if we go into the loading and we change it uh, we increase it by 100 amps so we go from 284 to 384.5 amps for example and we run steady state temperature we could see how the temperature automatically increases to 64 um, what if we go back into the loading and we change it by another 100 uh, amps so now it is 484.5 amps we rerun steady state temperature and you could clearly see how we begin to surpass the 90 degree maximum allow allowed temperature and th that gets us into almost 100 degree Celsius uh, temperature and that's why the the conductors have now changed colors from the the standard green to now red okay now, um, what if we wanted to optimize this and uh, we could use the uniform opacity, which increases the loading of all raceway cables until the temperature of the uh, hottest cable reaches the maximum allowed limit, in this case, 90 degrees Celsius. So if, if we click on uniform opacity, right, you could see uh, how we can optimize this particular size, which is 350. Um, before it reaches 90 degrees Celsius, we can actually load these cables to 462 amps. Um, we can also place this value here under the allowable opacity that we see here by selecting this option here, UGS calculated. This is inside the, the, uh, the cable page. So now what we're gonna be doing is uh, placing this optimized uh, loading value of 464 amps and inside the UGS study case so this is inside the uh, underground raceway system study case just make sure you have these two update uh, values checked currents from opacity calculation and size from cable sizing uh, calculation so when you perform a, um, a uniform opacity calculation like the one we've we've done here um, 
and then you open the cable editor page, your ampacity, your underground raceway systems uh, calculated allowable ampacity, now is uh, tr it, it, it's placed right there inside the cable editor page under the ampacity. So we are no longer using any of the table lookup methods um, uh, for derating the ampacity. We're going by the new near McGrath method um, on on when performing this thermal calculation as shown here. Okay, let's briefly go over the, the study case. So going back to the underground raceway systems, um, I open the study case and there are two methods. So you have the near McGrath method. Um, and for those users who have 50 Hertz IEC projects, they also have the option of doing the IEC 6287. Uh, now, when selecting this option, um, only the steady state temperature, because that's the scope of the that particular IEC standard, uh, only the steady state temperature option is displayed. Uh, all of the other optimized options like um, uniform opacity are not part of that standard, so they are automatically shown as disabled. So for uh, for access to those calcu uh, optimized calculations, just make sure you're using the near my graph method. And then um, we already had a chance to go over the update, the um, uh, the, the sizing, either the opacity or the, the cable sizing um, option. Um, if you're doing steady state um, calculations, and what I mean by steady state is um, you have uh, a certain uh, you're trying to you're trying to size a cable where your load is not constant. So for most of industrial users, um, our industrial sites tend to consume probably the same amount day after day. Perhaps you may have a different loading at night than you do during the day, but it's pretty steady. Um, if, however, when you're dealing with residential or perhaps renewable uh, type projects, you're going to have uh, peaks and lows during the day uh, or over time. So um, what we need to do in that case is you would need to use a transient temperature study and we need to select for the initial uh, condition is uh, going to be the load profile and then you need to set up select your steps. So let's say for example that you're trying to do one day. So maximum time will be 24 hours in up uh, the output steps will be for example in either 30 minute or hourly or 60 minute uh, range. After you have that set uh, set up the way I have it here, uh, you would just simply enter the um, the loading over time uh, profile inside each cable. So you double click on the cable, you select uh, the loading. Uh, this right here is where you specify the fixed um, loading. It doesn't change. And on the bottom right, you notice that there is a transient load profile. This is where you would insert uh, your loading over time. So we could say, okay, at one in the morning, two, three, four, five in the morning and then you would have a current that varies over time right so 240 amps at one in the morning 220 amps at two in the morning 210 amps at four in the morning and then at four it begins to spike right four in the morning 240 amps. five in the morning you're already like i'd say 300 amps and that continues to go up during the day so uh, this is where you would specify your transient load profile inside uh, this this would be unique to each cable circuit and um, as long as you have that option here set up in in the study case then ETAP will take the the load profile uh, into account for your steady state calculations and also use the output step size that you provided over on the right hand side and here is the transient uh, temperature calculation and then you can graph it uh, right here over time per raceway or per, per cable. Thank you.